All right, guys. So I just got from the barber shop, and um, it's been a while since I posted something. So um, you know, through the midst of all this ripping and running, you know, I want to take some time out to give a little bit of insight of what's been going on with me with the, over the last two weeks. Well, there's a lot of stuff that was going on, but one of the biggest things that was taking up a lot of my time is I was doing a whole lot of interviews. So if you guys recall, um, probably about seven or eight months ago, I'm, I did a video um, where we were doing interviews, we were hiring people, and I think I scheduled like 10 people for an interview that day and nobody showed and then um that was just that was during i think the beginning of the pandemic um before just before it started to become serious or whatever so now um me like a like a lot of other um employers uh, one of the biggest struggle points we're having post covid is um employee acquisition and retention um so you know it, it, I have a relatively small company. Well, I guess it depends on who you, um, who you ask. Uh, um, that determine rather not as relatively small, but we fluctuate from the staff from fifth about fifteen to twenty two. Um, every other it depends on what uh, when you ask us. Um, one week it might be twenty two fifteen, but we only we stay on average you consistent around seventeen people. And um, so some things that I have learned. Uh, when it comes to uh, employee recruitment and or retention um, because your people are the life blood of your organization so without people um, obviously uh, your, your organization or your company will fall flat unless you want it unless you're like a do-it-yourself or your soul or whatever but the volume of work that we're doing right now uh, we're doing a we're cleaning about 60 properties a week. It's, it's no way in the hell that I can clean all those things by myself. Uh, so a couple of things that I um, that I've I want to say that I've learned, but I had to get really proactive on um, to kind of stay ahead of the curve. Um, so um, one of the biggest things uh, about um, retaining employees. So there's this there's a whole lot of theories on why people aren't working. Um, you know, depends on who you ask. Some people blame the government. Um, some people just blame the generation and the lazy uh, people being lazy, or whatever have you. And I find myself fa falling uh, trapped to that that way of thinking for a while. And um, and uh, I guess that was kind of uh, easy out. It was just easy to blame other people for um, why it is that we was experienced what we was experienced rather than just kind of do something about it. Okay, so you know there's a problem. What are you doing about it? Um, so I had to have that hard talk with myself. It's like, all right, what are you doing about this problem? So but one of the biggest things that I took away, I took this away from the army and I tried to implement it in my organization is loyalty. Um, I want to really get people bought in to the organization and committed to the company. So how do, how is it that you get their loyalty? So here's, here's something that I learned. Everyone's loyalty is for sale. Everyone. Now when I say everyone's loyalty is for sale, you know, I don't mean like, you know, what I, what I quickly learned is that not everybody's motivated by money. So, you know, I thought about it. I just try to throw money at the problem. Here's money, here's money, here's some money. And I found out that the more money that I offered people, the more um, let that, the bigger the letdown and more of a headache it was for me um, when that organ, when that individual didn't follow through. Um, uh, so what I really had to learn was what was the price for this individual? Now, when I said that, I was just like, you know, like I said, I'm not talking about monetary, but it was just something as simple as uh, how people wanted to be spoken to, how they wanted to be treated or how they what they felt the organization's responsibility was to them. One of the things I had to do was change my line of questioning um, for during the interview process. And one of the things I started implementing this is like, what is your expectation of me as your employer because I found out that one of the biggest things for a lot of people was 
when they have a lot of negative things to say about their organization, it's because they had an expectation that wasn't met. Um, next was uh, being very clear about your expectations and really not wavering and tell them your non-negotiables. And um, really having that really like calm, hard conversation is like, all right, th these are non-negotiable. Um, I hear it, it's pretty much like one of those movies where they're, when they negotiate, here's their list of demands and both of you guys give you a list of demands. And then, um, if, you know, if both parties are willing to compromise, then, you know. Uh, the next one was uh, I had to um, get really creative on the type of people that um, that I was looking for. So in in um, the cleaning industry, there's also a lot there's a lot of people that are really good workers, but you know they don't get given the opportunity because of certain circumstances. So um, i.e. like a um, driver's license was a really big thing. Um, so uh, one of the things I had to really get creative on was really. I didn't want to really narrow my um, search, um, uh, my candidate pool. So I had to really go reevaluate my non-negotiables and stuff like that. So um, to really give me a um, broader pool to pick up from. Um, then next, uh, I'm always hiring. Um, so I put on, uh, this is the biggest thing. I just put on the, um, uh, I put up a hiring ad and I don't take it down. Um, I listed stuff on like Indeed and Zip Recruiters and that, um, my biggest one is Indeed. Um, it depends on who you ask. Everybody has mixed feedback about Indeed versus Zip Recruiter, but I use Indeed for, um, pretty much the, um, convenience factor. Um, but I just keep it on. And um, I just don't turn it off. I set a really low budget and then I just reallocated my from my marketing budget and just put it on and allocated that fund to solely just position. Uh, and then next, um, every time I go out and I look and I see people, you know, working and uh, if they and um, I ask them, you know, hey, are you do you like working here or are you looking for you know a different opportunity a, a career change and stuff like that and um every time every time i encounter someone that i think that can be a potential uh beneficial factor for us or a beneficial person on our team you know i i biggest key takeaways i took away is be good uh be good to the ones that's good to you so you got people that's busting your hump their hump for your organization you bust your hump for them show show them that you value them you want to retain those people and then the people that you got that you know they try to leverage the you need me factor because you know the trend now is becoming where um, everyone's becoming coming at the mercy of the employee and it's detrimental to the organization when you lose control and sight of the organization so um you focus on those who want to be there and it's all about the greater good of the group and you keep your good cycle funnel going and then you just kind of rotate them out until you get the people in that you need um right now that's pretty much the name of the game i, I don't know if that's what everyone else is doing but that's um just some inside of what it is that i'm doing to kind of be proactive of staying ahead of this um employment crisis um so yeah so with i'm trying to uh, take back hold of my organization and really focus on the people that want to be here and um, um yeah so now I mean, it sounds a lot easier said it's a lot easier said than done um but it's took me about six months to kind of get to where it is that i'm not well, i'm still struggling with staffing um but i'm a lot better today than i was uh six months ago um so and then in, th in about three months i think that we'll have it down to um, a science so but uh yeah man and if anybody else has some insight you know give me some pointers on some things that you're doing to stay ahead of this um uh, employment crisis my fellow entrepreneurs or business owners or anybody that's in um, some type of management or hiring capacity or what what is it that you're doing to kind of stay ahead of maybe you got it you got a more efficient way than what it is that I suggested so you know let me know